Hey, it's Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. This video is brought to you by Picmonic, or as I call it, it's the visual learner's paradise. Today we'll talk about lipid lowering agents, one of the most difficult topics in medicine. But with Picmonic, it's gonna be a piece of cake, so let's get started. First, pharmacology. What does that mean? It's the study of drugs, the study of medications. So what is lipid? Lipid is fat. How about lipoproteins? fat and proteins. And we have four types, colomicrons, very low density lipoprotein, low density lipoprotein, and high density lipoprotein. High density of what? High density of protein. Now, if you are a patient with hyperlipidemia, which one of these four is your friends? Of course, the one that has the least amount of fat, i.e. the HDL. That's why we call the HDL, roughly speaking, the good cholesterol, H for happy. But the LDL is the bad cholesterol. L is lousy. In the following picmonics, you will see HDL as an angel, LDL as the devil. Total cholesterol equals HDL plus LDL plus triglycerides over 5. So when I tell you that statins will lower your HDL, what does that mean? Statins will lower your total cholesterol, according to the equation. When I tell you that fibrates lower your triglycerides, what does that mean? It means that they will lower your total cholesterol. And lowering your total cholesterol is good for you if you have hyperlipidemia or hypercholesterolemia. So what are these lipid-lowering agents? You have statins, fibrates, cholestyramine, niacin, ezetimibe, PCSK9 inhibitors, and the brand new bimpitoic acid. So here's the story. You eat this double cheeseburger, which is absolutely delicious, but contains lots of fat. Speaking of fat, this is your dietary cholesterol that you got in the diet. Dietary cholesterol will get absorbed in your gut, absorbed from the gut to the blood. This is in the vicinity of the portal circulation, therefore portal vein, liver. And let's start with drug number one, ezetimibe, because it's the easiest one. Ezetimibe will inhibit the absorption of dietary cholesterol. Do you think this is a lipid-lowering agent? Oh yeah, because it will decrease the amount of cholesterol coming into my system. Ezetimibe, I have good news, I have bad news. Good news, I'll decrease absorption of dietary cholesterol. Bad news, where do you think this cholesterol is gonna go? In your stool, leading to diarrhea. And the stool will be greasy. The next medication, your famous statin drugs. Back to the story of the cheeseburger. You remember the dietary cholesterol? Yeah, dietary cholesterol, absorb it. And then portal vein, and then liver. Here is your dietary cholesterol. Plus some glucose, you get acetyl-CoA and then HMG-CoA. You have HMG-CoA reductase, that's the rate limiting step. And then you get mevalonate or mevalonic acid, cholesterol esters, and then VLDL, IDL, LDL, that's the bad cholesterol, and then oxidized LDL is gonna precipitate in your vessels leading to atherosclerosis, which increases your risk of heart attacks and strokes. That's why we call it the bad cholesterol, because when it increases, that's bad. How do statins work? Statins inhibit the rate-limiting step. They inhibit the HMG-CoA reductase enzyme. Therefore, I will decrease cholesterol esters in the liver, decrease VLDL, decrease LDL, which is the bad cholesterol. Decreasing the bad cholesterol is awesome. Statins inhibit HMG-CoA reductase enzyme. The liver is making less cholesterol. The liver is making less cholesterol. They will say, oh, I have less cholesterol. Let me actually upregulate my LDL receptor. Try to collect all of the tiny pieces of LDL from the blood. And this will lower your plasma LDL even more, which is great. Statins decrease your LDL, VLDL, and triglycerides, and they increase your good cholesterol. Side effects, liver toxicity, and muscle problems. Statins, portrayed as the statue being decorated by the rabbit throwing a party, are cholesterol-lowering drugs commonly used to prevent hyperlipidemia in conditions like stroke and myocardial infarction. Adverse effects can include rhabdomyolysis, the rabbit with muscle and lights, which is the breakdown of muscle cells, and hepatotoxicity, the liver that is covered in the toxic green chemical. The mechanism of action of statins involves inhibiting the enzyme HMG-CoA reductase, a rate-limiting enzyme in the cholesterol synthesis pathway, represented by the HMG hummingbird coin purse and the red duck locked up inside the cage. Statins benefit patients by decreasing LDL cholesterol, the ladybug devil with the down arrow, and decreasing triglycerides, the triceratops with a tag and down arrow. Statins also increase the good cholesterol HDL, 
portrayed as the hot dog angel with an up arrow on the top of the image. These effects can help prevent atherosclerosis and conditions like stroke or heart attack. So, in summary, statins are cholesterol-lowering drugs that can prevent stroke and myocardial infarction. Adverse effects can include rhabdomyolysis and hepatotoxicity. Statins work by inhibiting the enzyme HMG-CoA reductase. This results in decreased LDL cholesterol, decreased triglycerides, and increased HDL. Medication number three, the fibrates. They stimulate LPL, lipoprotein lipase. Now VLDL will be converted to IDL very quickly. And these VLDL are rich in triglycerides. So you're basically clearing away the VLDL and therefore washing out the triglycerides. This will decrease your triglycerides, which is awesome. Also, it decreases your cholesterol esters because we are shifting them to the side, according to Le Chatelier's principle. If you decrease cholesterol and triglycerides, I hereby declare you a lipid-lowering agent. Side effects of fibrates. When you increase the catabolism and clearance of triglycerides and cholesterol, you'll increase the risk of cholesterol gallstones because basically the biliary system is the excretory system for the bile. In addition, you can get liver problems or muscle problems. Fibrates, represented by the flybrats, are lipid-lowering agents indicated in patients with hyperlipidemia, hiker with lips. These drugs work by upregulating LPL, shown by the upregulated lip laser, and increasing lipoproteins lipolysis activity and ability to bind to triglyceride-rich lipoprotein. This increase in lipoprotein lipolysis leads to a decrease in triglycerides depicted by the down arrow tag Triceratops. Fibrates are also mildly effective in causing a slight increase in HDL, illustrated by the small up arrow hot dog angel, due to stimulation of reverse cholesterol transport. Fibrate treatment forms LDL with a higher affinity for its receptor, leading to more rapid catabolism. Thus, these drugs lead to a slight decrease in LDL, depicted by the small down arrow ladybug. Side effects of these medications include hepatotoxicity, portrayed by the liver with a toxic green glow, and cholesterol gallstones, shown as cholesterol burger goldstones. Medication number four, bile acid sequestrants such as cholestyramine. How do they work? They inhibit the absorption of bile acids. In other words, they trap the bile acids in the stool. Normally, before giving this drug, you have something called the enterohepatic circulation. Bile acid comes in, bile acid goes out. Beautiful. But now when you give bile acid sequestrants, the bile acids have been sequestered here. They have been trapped, imprisoned in the stool. And then the liver will say, oh, my bile acids are being lost in the stool. Let me make more bile acids. And therefore, I'll consume all of my cholesterol. And when I'm a hyperlipidemic patient, when I hear that the liver is consuming all of the cholesterols, I smile. Because decreased cholesterol in the liver equals decreased VLDL and therefore decreased LDL down the road. Side effects of bile acid sequestrants such as cholestyramine, cholecivilam, and cholestipol include bile acids being lost in the stools and bile acids are fatty so you get fat malabsorption and whenever you get fat malabsorption you get malabsorption of fat soluble vitamins since the liver is working like crazy trying to boost bile acid secretion and synthesis you can increase the risk of cholesterol gallstones bile acid resins the bile nile acid lemon raisins are a class of drug which work by disrupting the enterohepatic circulation of bile these drugs work to decrease cholesterol and are indicated for hyperlipidemia, shown by the hiker with lips. The mechanism by which they exert action is by binding to bile and preventing bile acid reabsorption in the gut, illustrated by the acid lemon pulled into the bile nile. This causes circulating blood cholesterol to be utilized to process more bile in the liver. In the blood, these drugs lead to slightly increased HDL and triglyceride levels portrayed by the small up arrows on the hot dog and tag triceratops. These medications cause increased cellular uptake of LDL to process more bile, decreasing blood LDL cholesterol, and shown as the down arrow ladybug. Commonly used bile acid resins are cholestipol, seen as the coal stapler, 
cholestyramine, colstarman, and colacevolam, the coal servant. A side effect of treatment with these drugs is cholesterol gallstones, cholesterol burger with goldstones, which occurs due to increased cholesterol concentration in bile. Bile acid resins also lead to decreased absorption of fat-soluble vitamins, shown by the down arrow bacon viking ship. Lastly, a major side effect of these medications is that patients hate it, portrayed by the disgusted patient, as it tastes bad and causes GI discomfort. The fifth and the last medication today is niacin, also known as nicotinic acid. Nicotinic acid is not nicotine. Niacin at a lower dose acts as a vitamin, but at a higher dose, it's an anti-hyperlipidemic drug. This is today's topic. We're talking about the anti-hyperlipidemic niacin, not the vitamin B3 niacin. Okay, niacin, how do you work? I inhibit the formation of VLDL. Great. And therefore, we'll have less IDL and less LDL, which is awesome. So, when I block this pathway, what do you think is going to happen to everything upstream? It's going to go up, including your high-density lipoprotein. That's your good cholesterol. Magnificent. Side effects of niacin include flushing, itching, paresthesia, hyperglycemia, and hyperuricemia. How do you prevent the flushing? Give aspirin about 30 minutes before giving niacin. Why? Because this niacin flushing is prostaglandin-related. And as you know, aspirin inhibits the formation of prostaglandins. And here are your niacin side effects. Niacin, or vitamin B3, is an essential nutrient that is represented in this picmonic as the nice sun. The therapeutic effects of niacin are likely a result of its inhibition of lipolysis in adipose tissue, illustrated by the character tied up with lip lights, as well as its actions to reduce hepatic VLDL secretion, depicted as the tied-up veiled ladybug devil with a liver. Niacin therapy is indicated for dyslipidemia in patients, as it has been shown to decrease triglycerides, portrayed by the down arrow tag triceratops, and has also been shown to decrease LDL levels in patients, shown by the down arrow ladybug devil. We use ladybug for LDL, and the devilish characteristics depict that LDL is known as a bad cholesterol. In addition to decreased LDL and triglycerides, niacin works to increase HDL levels, shown by the up arrow hot dog angel hot dog for HDL, and angel wings because HDL is known as the good form of cholesterol. This vitamin, when administered for medical therapy, is not without side effects, however. Flushing is a well-known side effect of niacin use, shown by the flashlight on the flushed face. However, these symptoms can be decreased with aspirin use, seen as the down arrow aspirin tablet. Niacin therapy is also associated with hyperglycemia, the hiker glue bottle. And this occurs because niacin increases insulin resistance and can eventually cause diabetes mellitus. In patients who do develop diabetes from niacin use, acanthosis nigricans can occur, which is a change involving velvety hyperpigmentation of the skin. Because niacin competes with uric acid for bodily excretion, hyperuricemia, the hiker unicorn, can occur. In extreme cases of hyperuricemia caused by this medication, patients can go on to develop gout. Of note, though a rare side effect, niacin can also cause hepatotoxicity. So let's quickly review the high-yield information on vitamin B3, or niacin. This essential nutrient works to inhibit lipolysis in adipose tissue and reduces hepatic VLDL secretion. Niacin is indicated for use in patients with hyperlipidemia, as it has been shown to decrease triglycerides, decrease LDL levels, and increase HDL levels. Side effects of niacin include flushing, which can be decreased with aspirin administration, along with hyperglycemia and hyperuricemia. In prolonged cases of hyperglycemia, patients may develop diabetes and acanthosis nigricans, while in extreme cases of hyperuricemia, gout can develop. Rarely, niacin can lead to hepatotoxicity. And this slide summarizes all of the lipid-lowering agents in just one picture. Beautiful. And then this beautiful comparison table. Here you have the mechanism of action, and then you have the side effects and the contraindications. Thank you, Pickmark. Next, statins, the statue. What are the side effects of statins? Liver toxicity, rhabdomyolysis, and muscle problems. What's the mechanism of action? Statins inhibit HMG-CoA reductase. Reductase, the red duck. This will decrease your ladybug, which is your LDL, decrease your triceratops, which is your triglycerides, but increase your good HDL. Now, fibrates, they are used to treat hyperlipidemia. 
they increase the clearance of VLDL. And when you increase the clearance of VLDL, it's as if you're increasing the clearance of triglycerides. As you see, the triceratops has been slammed. Moreover, there is slight decrease in LDL, but increase in HDL. The increased clearance will increase your risk of cholesterol gallstones. Bile acid resins, we use them to treat hyperlipidemia. Mechanism of action, they prevent bile acid absorption. There is slight increase in the triglycerides, slight increase in HDL, but there is decrease in LDL. What are these drugs? Cholestipol, cholestyramine, and cholecivilam. Side effects, since the liver will try to make more bile acid, the liver will consume its cholesterol. This will increase the risk of cholesterol gallstones. Bile acid malabsorption equals fat malabsorption equals malabsorption of fat soluble vitamins. Don't forget that the patient hates cholestyramine and its family. And honestly, I remember answering a question about a lipid lowering agent and the question was so vague. The only hint was that the patient hated it. I just remember this picmonic, it flashed into my mind. I answered cholestyramine and it was correct. That's the power of picmonic. Niacin inhibits lipolysis in the peripheral tissue. It decreases triglycerides. It decreases VLDL, but it increases HDL. Side effects include flushing. What should I do? Give aspirin 30 minutes before niacin. Hyperuricemia and hyperglycemia can happen as well. Picmonic allows you to browse topic based on your favorite book. And here are the steps that I use in order to master these picmonics. Repetition is the mother of learning. And repeating picmonics is just fun. Because they combine visual, audio, storytelling, read the script, space repetition, and you can even quiz yourself and create your own picmonics. Just imagine that. I have created several videos for Picmonic and we have talked about these bacteria before. If you go to Picmonic, you can learn about all of these bacteria in a visual manner. It's awesome. Pharmacology wise, we have talked about these today, but if you go to Picmonic, you can learn about the rest of them and there is even more. This is just a short list. These are my favorite topics at Picmonic, but these are not the only topics, not by any stretch of the imagination. You can learn about medical terminology, anatomy, physiology, biochemistry, pathology, internal medicine. They even have many topics for nursing students, medical students, pharmacy students. They are amazing. I've been using Picmonic for about 10 years and it's one of my best decisions ever. You can even download their app on your phone or tablet. So what are you waiting for? Learning medicine has never been more fun. Go to picmonic.com slash VIP hookup slash medicosis and they will hook you up. Use my code for a free trial and for a discount. Thank you so much for watching. Huge thank you to Picmonic for sponsoring this video. See you guys later. Be safe, stay happy and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. And Picmonic with this lovely pictured mnemonic that makes learning so much fun. Peace.